This is Catholic Forum. I'm Bob Krebs. Dr. Bob Sawyer is a physician, a retired Army colonel, a teacher, and the leader of a miracle healing ministry. He will be leading a miracle healing uh, prayer service on Saturday, May 20th at 6.30 p.m. at Holy Angels Church in Newark, Delaware, beginning, as I said, at 6.30. And I'm happy to welcome the Catholic Forum, uh, uh, Dr. Bob Sawyer. Welcome to the program. Thank you. It's good to be here. Um, we're going to be talking about your ministry. We're going to be talking about uh, the upcoming uh, service in Newark at uh, Holy Angels. Uh, before we do that, uh, Dr. Bob, if you would please uh, tell us a little bit about yourself, about your about your early uh, life, um, and uh, where did you grow up, and all of those uh, interesting things, if you would please. Okay. Uh, I grew up on Long Island, New, uh, New York. Um, born in 1940, and as my wife loves to say, Jesus, uh, Moses just began when he was 80. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I was an agnostic till I was 32, and yet I had the sense that if there was a God, it was really important. So I, I, I treated God uh, reverentially. I went to church every week because if there was a God, I didn't want to tick him off. Right. Sort of the Pascal equation of <laughs> hedge your bets. And then in 1932, uh, when I was 32, not 1932, um, it, it, it all came together. Uh, and the Lord had a profound uh, reach into my life and it changed everything. Talk, talk about that, if you would, please. Um, you were, were you in the, uh, in the army at the time, or were you a practicing physician, or what, was, what state of life were you in? I, I was just finishing my ears, nose, and throat surgery residency at Walter Reed. Gotcha. Uh, I had three children. I'd been married about 10 years. And uh, I reached a point where I was on orders to Germany. I knew I was leaving in a couple of weeks. And I, I, I was sent a book by a friend of mine, a neighbor of mine, that got my head racing. And the book was called The Catholic Pentecostals. Hmm. And it was about the charismatic renewal in the Catholic Church. And I found myself being intrigued by it. I knew I had to tell this lady something because I was going to be traveling through New York on my way to Germany in a couple of weeks. So I, I had to read the book to, to satisfy her. And in reading it, I found myself wanting to have what these people had before. Many of them had been through Curcio. Mm -hmm. And I, and I, and I said, God, if you're there, I'd be happy to have what they had in the beginning, not necessarily the supercharge, but the Lord had other ideas for me. Yeah. <laughs> Along came the supercharge. <laughs> so you were, you were, were you raised Catholic? You said you went to church. Was it? I, I was raised Catholic. Yeah. Um, never any, any question about, as a matter of fact, in high school and in university, I went to a Jesuit university, went to a Catholic high school. I was a public until high school. Right. And I, I took two courses in apologetics and I knew it up here, but I didn't know God right. down here. Right. But I knew that if there was a, if there was a true church, it would be the Catholic church provided there's a God. Right. So um, did you always want to be a physician? No, I started off in electrical engineering. Nobody in my family had ever done anything medical. So this wasn't even on my radar. Uh, I had incredible talent in mathematics, and I figured, well, gee, uh, I, I, I must be destined to be a uh, uh, an engineer or something like that. So I went off to Marquette University School of Engineering, and I spent my first year 
at Marquette in, in engineering. And in retrospect, it was a God incidence mm -hmm. where we went out, a group of guys from the engineering school went out bowling one night and we went back to this one fellow's house and they started playing uh, cards and I'm not much of a card player, but I started looking over some books in his dad's bookshelves. His dad and mom had been killed a couple of years before. His dad was a physician and he had all these medical books. And I, so I started just paging through. Ultimately, a couple of them just sort of stood out and I said, gee, do you mind if I borrow these books? And, and uh, he said, go ahead. So I went back to my dormitory and about three o'clock or four o'clock in the morning, the sun started to rise and I realized that I had read through the night and I realized that, gee, <laughs> I, would, I would never have done that with my <laughs> physics books. Right. So suddenly the light went on and gee, is, is there more to this than just a coincidence? Right. So then how did you uh, end up in the military? Uh, it was very practical. I was the youngest person in my med school class. Uh, and back then it was, Vietnam was active. Mm -hmm. And th the message was that any physician was draftable until he's 35, not just the, the ordinary person, but there's a special set of rules for doctors. Right. And I realized that two of my classmates ha during the Cuban Missile Crisis one day just disappeared. And they, I never saw them again. They were just pulled out of medical school. And I decided that I needed to hedge my bets. Mm -hmm. I needed to have some sort of a strategy for reducing what at that point in time was an eight-year obligation where you had active duty and then following it you had times when they could call you back on active duty and so i just went with the the logic let's get some of that reserve time out of the way while i'm in medical school so that i ha don't have the, the position of being called back on active duty uh against my wishes so you're at this point you're 32 you're uh, an agnostic catholic um, yeah. you're, you're handed this book about the charismatic renewal. Had you ever even, were you even aware of the charismatic movement not in the a, church? Not a clue. Yeah. And then, so, so you read the book and then what happened? I, I found myself with a whole series of coincidences, uh, that are beyond the, the scope of a short talk here. Yeah. Um, but finding myself getting to the point where I was thinking more and more that maybe there is a God, you know, I was really praying. I was saying, God, if you're there, I will follow. But your job is to, to reveal yourself to me because I can't follow you unless you reveal yourself. Yeah. So there was a deal there. Right. And gradually I felt as if the Lord was saying more and more, follow me, follow me, do these things. And, and I, in the dark of the night, one night, 10 o'clock at night, I had the, the memory of putting on a Turkish towel dressing on one of my patients because I had operated on them. All the stitches fell apart. Uh, these were the days before good antibiotics. And he had a giant hole in his neck where saliva would just come through the front of the, the neck. And you could look at the front and see five inches of backbone straight through. Wow. And I felt terrible. In retrospect, that terrible feeling was God's compassion for this man. And, and here I am saying, Lord, I know I will never see the results of this. But if you heal this man, then, then I will give you everything. I'll give you my life. Uh, but I know that I will never see the results of this. So, so just, just in, in weeks or months, do what, do what I know the loving thing is, and that's to heal him. Mm. 
and I was thinking he would need some surgeries and some additional things, just like in the medical community. That's that's what it that's what we do, right. but speeding up the process. And at six o'clock in the morning, I'm back in Walter Reed. I'm taking off this man's Turkish towel dressing, and there's no hole whatsoever in his neck anymore. It's totally healed. Wow. Wow. And all what my did... teachers <laughs> were, who were around came over and said, oh, my, because they had seen this day by day. It was yeah. a wasn't surprise to them. But they said there is no known medical explanation for this, the whole hole being closed. Uh, uh, no known medical explanation is sort of doctor code for it's a miracle. <laughs> so how did you feel at that point, uh, Dr. Bob? Was, was, were you, did your knees buckle or, <laughs> or what? Well, it, it certainly attracted my attention. Oh, sure. I'm sure it did. But, uh, but being the ultra-logical doubter, um, I, I went back to doubt mode. Hmm. Uh, well, if this is really from God, then... If I wait 24 hours, he won't have had a fever because maybe the skin closed prematurely. Uh, you know, I'm making up these fantastical explanations for something that really, medically speaking, just wasn't logical. But but I'm, I'm trying to search for maybe there's a natural explanation. And, and gee, I better check and make sure that his white count is normal and, and he's swallowing because... That was why I operated on him in the first place, difficulty sure. swallowing. And so, so I waited 24 hours. And then when I went in, he said, Dr. Sawyer, I'm swallowing better than I have in years. I am really hungry. Can I eat? And I fed him and he obviously ate normally. And his white count was normal. And every, every test that he had was normal. At which point I said, I think I need to have a visit to the chapel. <laughs> and in the chapel, it, everything just came together. It yeah. was, and, and interestingly enough, I didn't tell my wife, because uh, that was a Saturday that I had this, so it was a half day. I went home, and my wife was there, and my mother and father were visiting. And at the end of the weekend, m my wife, Julie, said, Bob, what has happened to you? And I said, why? And she said, well, normally when your mother comes to visit, there's a fight within 30 minutes. You haven't said one cross word to your, to your mother. <laughs> All I know is you're not the same guy. <laughs> and, and that was the beginning of a, a grand adventure. Wow. My guest on this edition of Catholic Forum is Dr. Bob Sawyer. He'll be um, conducting a healing service on Saturday, May 20th, uh, 2023 at uh, 6.30 p.m. at Holy Angels Church in Newark, Delaware. Uh, so then how did your healing ministry get launched from there? Well, uh, that's, that's interesting because as soon as I got to Germany, some things happened and, and uh, I, I found myself being accused of being a religious zealot, uh, of being a crazy guy, because I was all in for the Lord. Mm. And as a result of that, I found myself kind of backing off and saying, well, I will be all in for the Lord, but I'm going to be respectable. Mm -hmm. I'm going to, I'm not going to stick my neck out. And decades later, I found myself being prayed with for, for a deeper move of the Holy Spirit that was based on, on what kinds of things keep us bound up. So in this area, I wasn't free. I was, I was being cautious and careful. And, and I was prayed with for unbound, unbound ministry, which is a, uh, an inner healing deliverance ministry. And one of the things that came to mind, talk about spontaneous thoughts from the Holy Spirit, I shared something that happened to me in kindergarten. 
And it just popped into my mind as I was being prayed with. And it was something that the teacher said to me in front of a whole group of kids that was somewhat awkward and, and uh, embarrassing. Right. And the, the person leading the, uh, the prayer said, how did that make you feel? And I, I said, not good. And, and she said, embarrassed? And I said, yeah, I think so. So she prayed specifically against fear of embarrassment. And within a couple of days, I realized that all of my life, I have been avoiding situations that might be embarrassing, that might be awkward, uh, that, that, and, and suddenly the Lord's healing of that in me made it possible for me to stand in front of a group of people and say, God's going to show up. I just trust. I, I know he is. And I just have the courage to be able to, to do that. So how many years now have you been doing this healing ministry? Um, this, this, I'm praying with one person at a time. I've been doing pretty much my entire life. Right. But standing in front of a group of people, 10 years. 10 years. And you've seen some remarkable uh, results. Can you uh, talk, talk about some of, the, some of the healings that have taken place? Okay. Um, I, I've seen about... Uh, six or seven people who were healed of blindness. Um, uh, one of the people uh, had a degenerative change in her eyes and, and she had not been able to uh, drive. She was legally blind in one eye and almost legally blind in the other. Um, and, and she was totally healed went back to her ophthalmologist, the Johns Hopkins ophthalmologist, and her doctor said, uh, I don't know what happened. I don't have an explanation. I need to check with my colleagues. And literally, this lady who had not been able to drive her car for years uh, was after a full year with this ophthalmologist finally given permission to go back to driving. I think the ophthalmologist thought she was it was going to come back. <laughs> so that that's a memorable one yeah uh in southern virginia i uh i had a healing service and after the healing service uh, uh there was uh, a situation where we were getting together as a group to kind of go over what what did we see in the way of healings from the from the prayer ministry one of the people went into a restaurant that was the wrong restaurant for our group. And here was a lady who had just left the healing service that I had conducted, who had lupus. Uh, and as a result of the lupus, she had been a cripple, barely able to move for, for over 10 years. And she had not eaten a bit of solid food in over 10 years. Mm as all a part of her lupus. She was, she was dancing around in this crowd while eating her first meal in 10 years, telling everybody, Jesus healed me. Wow. <laughs> That's something that you, you don't forget quite easily, I would think. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it's so good. <laughs> so, so you're coming to, uh, to Newark, Delaware, to, to Holy Angels Church. It's on um, uh, Possum Park Road on, uh, on May the 20th, beginning at 630. Walk us through that event. What will the participants experience? Okay. Uh, often, uh, this is a time when the gospel is preached. And it's sharing, just like Jesus perfectly revealed the Father's heart, that's what I want to do. The heart of love that, that was the very nature of, of God um, and, and the power of the Holy Spirit. So I preach about these things, the heart of God, that he wants to bring people into freedom. He wants to heal people. 40% of his gospel um, uh, narratives have to do with healing. And he's saying the kingdom of God has come. Well, I'm talking to them about the kingdom of God has come and I'm bringing them to a better awareness that it's not a, it's their, 
their experience of do I deserve to be healed has nothing to do with it. It's not about us and it's not about them. It's about Jesus and his heart and his, his wanting to bring them into, into more freedom. So he wants to bring them into, into a, a fuller life in the spirit. And the Holy Spirit comes in power. Uh, Jesus talked about his followers. And in, his, in talking to his followers, he, he said, greater than John the Baptist, and John was greater than all the prophets who preceded him. So we're talking about everybody who, born of man, born of woman, uh, who is in the kingdom of God, walking in the spirit and and having given their lives to jesus they are new creatures they're born anew the holy spirit dwells in us and through the power of the holy spirit and the experience of a personal pentecost we we just see what jesus saw and do what jesus did and this is an invitation to everybody. So one of the things that I encourage everybody to do is to pray with one another and experience for themselves that what, what Jesus promised is real and, and then to go out and tell the world what they've just seen. Hmm. And then, of course, we have the actual healing service where people testify to the fact that they have been healed. They, they do what multiple scriptures talk about let the world know about the goodness of our God. Mm -hmm. and, and the then, whole, go ahead. I'm sorry. And then at the very end, there's a time for individual prayer from uh, healing ministry team members. Yeah. And, and it, many, many healings happen there too. Right. And it's not just for physical healings. It's emotional healings and relational healings, any, anything that's troubling someone. Well, I've seen I've seen PTSD healed. I've seen schizophrenia with with uh, with uh, uh, visions that are that are uh, schizophrenic. Right. <laughs> uh, uh, words that they hear and and things that they see, obviously not from God. Right. Uh, I've seen those things healed, but the primary focus is on the physical healing, and and yet inner healing happens just by seeing. The goodness of God, and it's a door opener for more. So, um, if if our listeners, viewers would like more information, can they go to your website? Is that the best way? Um, yes. And that's miraclehealingministry.org, correct? Yes, with yeah. with dashes. With dashes, great. All right, very good. So it is uh, coming up on uh, May the twentieth, Holy Angels Church in Newark. Um, Dr. Bob Sawyer, thanks so much for sharing the time with us today on Catholic Forum. God bless. Thank you so much.